I've made my way to Ushuaia on the southern tip of Argentina, a place that calls itself the end of the world and the beginning of everything. From here, I'll board a boat headed for the Antarctic on a journey to retrace the steps of famed explorer Ernest Shackleton. Almost a century ago, Shackleton's two-year ordeal, including being stranded on the Antarctic ice, provided an early, accurate record of the geography and climate of the Antarctic. I'm going to see how things have changed in what has been nearly a century since Shackleton's epic voyage. In 1914, Shackleton set out to cross Antarctica on foot. But before reaching land, his ship was crushed in pack ice, beginning one of the greatest survival stories of the last century. Our ship, the Polar Pioneer, is now setting out to retrace Shackleton's escape. For the next three weeks, I'll be traveling with a group of Antarctic veterans who have a unique perspective on the impact of global warming. After a few days at sea, we reach Antarctica. I go ashore with Dave Burkett, who's been coming here for 30 years. Yeah, I do keep coming back here and I, I very much enjoy it. It is a fascination with me. What is a fascination? Well, uh, the, um, the scenery, the wildlife, and uh, it's a climate that seems to suit me. I don't like it when it's too hot, albeit it's not that cold in Antarctica now during the summer months. Uh, indeed, I went back uh, earlier on in the year. Uh, back home to Britain and it was uh, colder there than it was in Antarctica. Burkett says that evidence of climate change is plain to see. I mean over the last 50 years we've seen a, an increase in temperature, mean temperature of about 3 degrees, 3 degrees centigrade. Uh, but here at Port Lockroy, yeah, there's been some visible, as you look at the glacier out the back there, uh, there's more and more uh, crevasses appearing each year and uh, the general uh, retreat of the glacier. The Antarctic Peninsula is undergoing some of the most dramatic climate changes on the planet. 87% of glaciers here are retreating and large ice shelves are collapsing at an alarming rate. The changes happening here are likely to be the most significant contributing factor to sea level rises globally in the coming decades. <laughs> this colony of Gentoo penguins now struggles in rising temperatures, which can exceed 10 degrees Celsius on summer days. I can remember looking at, at some of these penguins, the Gen 2s here, on really hot days. They're gasping for air. Uh, the beaks are wide open. It, they, they, they don't find it comfortable on those days, there's no doubt about it. Uh, and those days seem to be getting more and more frequent when you've got bright, uh, really high temperatures, blue skies and sunshine. One of the most obvious effects of climate change here is the melting of glacial ice. As the edges of a glacier melt away, they leave freshly exposed rock, beach, or sea. Antarctic biologist Gary Miller says that there are dramatic signs of glacial retreat at Paradise Harbor, just east of Port Lockroy. In particular, at Paradise, 
that glacier used to, the whole front of it used to be floating out into the, into the bay, and now about half of it is actually resting on the, on the shoreline. So you can see a line of rock underneath it. So we know that it's moved back considerably. Miller's work as a biologist has taken him all around the Southern Ocean. He tells me that the cold ocean currents produced by Antarctica are responsible for regulating the Earth's climate. All the way around the Antarctic as ice forms, it creates this body of water that is heavier than the rest of the water and it physically sinks and drives the whole system of the ocean. So it's the force behind most of our ocean currents by driving along the bottom of the sea and upwelling in various places. It creates these circulations. Being in a position on the pole in a hub, it drives the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the Indian Ocean all together. So it, it drives the entire world's circulation. Miller says that when Antarctic ice melts, disrupting the world's oceans, this contributes to global warming. And with projected temperature rises of up to six degrees this century, the melting ice and sea level rises could be devastating. So a five degree change would be a massive change. But, um, and in fact, the world has had a period in which it was warmer than it what is now. But uh, we weren't there. And the continents looked a lot different because of the rise in sea level. And if you if you raise the sea level up that much, 90% of our population is now underwater. And that's an awful lot of people. So if that happens in a short period, even on the order of 50 years, we won't be able to keep up with that. Dave Burkett says that he spent many years in the freezing cold of Antarctica. But now, temperatures are warm enough for it to rain. The climate generally has changed. I, indeed, I can remember when I first saw it rain um, down the peninsula on uh, Adelaide Island, and we were out dog sledging, and uh, big black clouds moving towards us. We got camp up, and it rained for a full 24 hours, and it, it rained hard too. Uh, and that was my first real experience of rain down there. Nowadays, working down the peninsula, Throughout the summer, rain is commonplace. We're now issued with uh, uh, waterproof clothing rather than just windproofs as we were in the, uh, in the 1970s. After a few days, we set course for Elephant Island, a day's journey north. Even from a distance, Burkett can see that the island's ice cover is melting away. It'd be interesting to come back in 10, 20 years and see what it looks like. Then. Yeah. Well, I mean, in 30 years from those pictures, there's been no sort of change. So. No. My first visit to Antarctica was uh, back in 1970. Uh, and I was on a joint services, British services expedition to Elephant Island, one of the South Shetland group, which of course appears uh, very prominently in the Shackleton saga. After Shackleton's ship was crushed by ice, his crew sailed here in three lifeboats. We tried to land our boats on Point Wild, but we can't make it past the rocks ice and sea swell. It took great skill for Shackleton to land all three boats and 28 crew safely. But they'd been at sea for 16, 16 months or so. They'd been drifting on those ice floes. But by the time they landed on, on Elephant Island there, they were in a sorry state of health. Uh, and demoralized as well after the, what they must have gone through. Shackleton was well aware that no one would find them here, and so he and five men set out in one lifeboat and headed for South Georgia, 
1,300 kilometers away. Shackleton described his voyage saying, we were a tiny speck on the vast vista of the sea. The ocean that's open to all and merciful to none, that threatens even when it seems to yield, that is pitiless always to weakness. It, it was an amazing achievement. Now think about it. You know, 800 miles distance, just a little bit out, and they'd, they'd have missed South Georgia altogether. It took Shackleton 16 days to reach South Georgia in a lifeboat. Our ship makes the journey in three. Also on board the Polar Pioneer is 78-year-old Alec Trendle, a renowned geologist who was trained by a cousin of Shackleton. He says that even though he never succeeded in crossing Antarctica, Shackleton's rescue mission made him a legend. The big anomaly of Shackleton that he had to live with was, was his total failure to achieve what he'd set out to do. With, with the Imperial Transantarctic Expedition a and his enormous outstanding success in saving all the men uh, that he had personally left on, on, the, on the Weddell Sea side. He would have been aware of this tension between Shackleton the Great Success and Shackleton the Great Failure. In 1951, Alec Trendle took part in the expedition to map the island where Shackleton ended his voyage. No one can ever forget an arrival on South Georgia. You get up first morning and there is what seems to be the Alps sticking up out of the ocean. And it, it, it's, it's um, breathtaking, and it was for me then in November 1951. We wake to the site of the stunning Dragalski Fjord. Towering rock at the entrance to the fjord has a familiar name, Trendle Crag. It was named to honor Alec's contribution to geological work on South Georgia. You see, we didn't choose the place names we were allocated. Every member of the South Georgia Service was given uh, either a peak or a crag or a glacier or something. And they gave me Trendle Crag. We land where Shackleton first landed, at King Hawken Bay. It's been 50 years since Trendle set foot on the island. What he finds is a landscape transformed by warming temperatures and glacial retreat. When Shackleton actually made his crossing, he would have walked from Peggotty Kemp, which is maybe half a mile down there or more, and he would have walked a little way along the shore, and then he would have struggled past the snout of this glacier behind us, which would have reached all the way to the shore, and they describe how they waited for the waves to recede and dash past the glacier snout, and that's this glacier, and of course it's a, it's a solid three or four hundred meters back from the shore now. So we cannot actually accurately reproduce Shackleton's route on this uh, receding glacier snout here. It is, um, again, several hundred meters back from when it was in the 50s, and um, it uh, is probably was substantially further in this direction in 1916.
the 170 kilometer long island of South Georgia is home to an astonishing proportion of the ocean's wildlife, including the wandering albatross, the largest flight of bird in the world. What is happening to wildlife here tells us a lot about the impact of global warming on Antarctica. But every species is affected differently. With less ice, the fur seals have started to move inland, where they disrupt nesting birds and damage plants. The most dramatic changes we've seen have been destruction of plant life by, for example, in South Georgia, the increase of fur seal population. It's, it's continued to increase over the last couple of decades, and so now it numbers somewhere around 3 million or, or more. Antarctica is a near pristine wilderness, in part because of its harsh climate. But here in South Georgia, Warming temperatures mean that introduced species, like reindeer and rats, are now thriving. The fact that the continent is warming up may mean that it's going to open the door to introductions of many species. And so I think that's one of the most immediate concerns now. Alec Trendle started work with the South Georgia Survey in 1951 mapping the geology of the island. But not long into the expedition, he fell through the snow cover into a deep crevasse, ending his first trip to South Georgia. The snow gave way at one point and I slipped. I should have been roped but wasn't at that point and I went down that crevasse and fell 50 meters down it. Uh, it was interesting, uh, no one knows quite what they feel like as they fall down the crevasse till it happens, but I remember there's no particular sensation of fear. Um, there was one of intense um, feelings that one had done a silly thing that should not have been done. <laughs> Just waited calmly to see what would happen. And a 50 metre fall takes about three seconds if you look at the physical equation, so and, and when, you, when you hit something at the bottom, you're traveling at about 100 kilometers an hour. And so I fell on my back on the flat top of this wedge block of ice, and I was um, knocked out by the impact. Luckily for Trendle, a colleague rescued him. And after being sent back to hospital in Britain, Trendle returned to South Georgia to complete his geological work. Much of his time was spent here, at Gritviken Whaling Station, where Shackleton was eventually buried. On the beach we find three rusting boats. Alec recognizes them as the ships he sailed on as a young man. Well, I'd forgotten that so much time has passed, that a, that a useful little ship could have turned into this. Well, um, my memory of it is so clear, and of it as a freshly painted and useful little boat. Very sad. Not everything changes so quickly in South Georgia. This rookery of 80,000 king penguins has been here 
for more than 100 years, even before Shackleton's time. But how many species can look forward to another 100 years? Biologists say that an increase in water temperature here of even one degree may mean that some species may not be able to breed. Antarctica is very much an indicator. Um, has a great effect on the world's climate, uh, on the world's oceans and so on. And it is a good indicator as to what is happening to our planet. So uh, people should, we, all of us should be striving to be more conscious of what we're doing, what we are doing to this planet and what we have done to this planet and try, make the effort for the future, for future, for future generations, for our children and grandchildren. I think my grandchildren are pretty bright and uh, it, it's, it's essentially their problem that they will have to solve. My responsibility is to make sure they understand that fact, they understand the problems and uh, they will have any advice from me they like in solving them, but it's essentially their problem, they've got to live and I have great faith in their ingenuity and, and ability to do this. Thank you.